What's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's your boy No Name, back at it again with another New York Giants video. As you can tell by the title, we're going to be discussing some uh, free agency moves today. Players on our team, players that are currently on the New York Giants, who I believe have the possibility of being cut. I don't know for sure who's going to get that thumbs down, you know, that, that Triple H evolution to Randy Orton thumbs down from back in 04. I don't know who's going to get it, but I guarantee you there's a couple of players on this list that I compiled for you guys that's probably not going to be on the Giants uh, this coming season. Now, before I get into the vid, as usual, please smash that like button. If you haven't already subscribed, uh, share the video around with your friends and put a comment down below. I love chatting with y'all. Let's get right into it. So Joe Judge, after coming aboard as the new head coach for the New York Giants, had a great first press conference. And from this press conference, three main things stuck with me and stuck with just about anybody else that listened to it or watched it about the types of players that he wants on his team. He wants hardworking players, in fact not just players, he just wants hardworking people, whether it's on the staff, whether it's on the equipment management team, whether it's you know in the locker room, wherever it is, he wants hardworking people, organized people, hard-nosed people, the blue collar representation of the Northeast Tri-State area, he wants that. He wants team first players, players that don't you know go out here and demand you know, extremes amount of money. Of course, there's other player first players, you know, there's other actions you can take, but the money is the most common one. He wants those type of players, the ones that say, I'm going to take this discount because I know it's going to help out the team in the end. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take less snaps of play. I'm, I'm going to start less so that this guy's going to develop because I know it's going to help us out in the end. Players like that. And finally, he wants an old school yet versatile set of players out here. Old school in the sense that they're playing every single minute, every last drop of football. It's out there in the trenches. Once again, hard nose, they're physical. You know what I mean? They know what they're doing on the field. They're smart, but versatile in the sense that they're not just a one trick pony. So with that being said, I think um, I'm gonna use those same set of criteria for when I do my free agents that we could possibly sign video. But right now, Guys that we could cut, they're going to be cut because they probably don't fit the bill that I just listed right here. You know what I'm saying? So first things first, first person up, Alec Ogletree. Ogletree came over here back when the rebuild originally started, when it was Shermer and Gettleman in the 2018 season. And he came over here on a contract that's, you know, I think it's around 15 to 18 million dollars. And by the way... I don't, for this specific video, I'm not really going to fake focus on, uh, you know, direct salary numbers that much because if they're getting cut, it probably means we're going to save money anyway. So back to Ogletree, on the contract he came over for when we traded him for him, he never lived up to it. He had a great first year in which he had five interceptions. He was great in pass coverage. But a lot of those interceptions, and I said this in my um, 2018 recap video, a lot of those interceptions were kind of, he was a little bit out of position. And I'll give him credit. You can still give him credit for the five interceptions. Other than that, he wasn't that noticeable on the field. You know what I mean? Whether it was in the run game, whether it was tackling and whatnot. And the Giants defense seemed to be allergic, allergic to tackling for the past three or four years. Ogletree wasn't getting it done. Now, if he came out here again this year and put up similar or better stats, I could tell you, yeah, you know what? He's a middle linebacker we could keep. But the fact of the matter is, he didn't do that. He does not live up to his numbers that he's getting paid. And in general, we might do an overhaul the linebacking core anyway to match uh, the age and the direction that the team is going. Right now, I think the only linebackers we're keeping from this year are going to be Ryan Connolly and David Mayo. Uh, middle linebackers, that is. I could be wrong, but those are the only two I think we're keeping. So Ogletree is definitely a possibility for being cut. And I'm just going to go out and say it's a guarantee that he's going to be cut because that's been a question mark there for about two years now. Next up, Dalvin Tomlinson. Dalvin Tomlinson is not somebody I want to get cut. First of all, I'm going to put that out there before I go into why he's on the list. I like Dalvin Tomlinson. I like him a lot. I like the fact that he's the only like Jerry Reese player left on the team. I think other than Evan Ingram. They're, Tomlinson is the only Jerry Reese player left on the team, and it's because he earned his spot there. He's a great nose tackle and one of the best pure nose tackles in the entire league. In my opinion, top 10. And Tomlinson has been nothing but a team player since he was drafted. He's, you know, kept quiet. You know, put his head down, gone to work, 
let his you know let his play on the field show whatever it is that he might have to back up and whatnot and in general there's there's nothing really bad will thomas and he it's not like he uh disappoints anybody because week in week out he goes in there and if anything he probably impresses you if you're watching him and given the fact that he is a pure nose tackle that's about the only reason i have it on here believe you me i expect them and i want them to keep thomason because he's probably the best player on our defense or at least on our defensive line which is the best part of our defense he's probably the best player on there and he's also the um the oldest on there if i'm not wrong uh, when was leonard williams drafted he was either drafted in 15 or 16 well he's one of the vets in that locker room even though he's young that's another thing he does match the timeline for this uh rebuild he's still very young He's great at his position. He's a great team player. Nothing, you know, toxic or bad has ever been leaked about Tomlinson. And he does nothing but go out there and produce. And he's also been one of the most consistent players on the Giants defense. I have nothing good to say about this dude. But the only reason he's on this list is because he's not exactly as versatile as, you know, he could be. Next up is Leonard Williams. Very similar uh, situation, Tomlinson. Uh, whereas he's one of the best players on the defense, one of the best players on the defensive line. He's opposite of Thompson in the fact that Williams is very versatile. He could play the three technique. He could play on the inside as a nose tackle. He could play as a defensive tackle. He could play as a 3-4 defensive end. You could move him all across that defensive line and he'll produce. The problem is, and personally, I don't really, it's not that I don't like Leonard Williams. It's just that I don't see a reason to keep him. And Judge may keep him, Joe Judge and this coaching staff may keep him because of that versatility, which I wouldn't be angry at, but I don't see a reason to keep him other than that. Our run defense did improve since Leonard Williams got here, yes, but not by that much. By what we, we, and besides, it wasn't exactly a great set of teams to judge against because in the second half of the season, we played like maybe one or two good teams, you know, the Packers being one of them. And I'm trying to come up with another good team that we played in the second half. I'm kind of drawing a blank. I mean, listen, if we keep him on, I have no problem. And it's definitely because of the versatility and because he helped improve the run defense. But we could let him go because of the salary. You know, this is where it comes in. I guess you could file it on the team first and whatnot. But you could just file it under he might just demand too much money. You know, there's been rumors going out there since, he, since we traded for him from the Jets. That he wants to be a top, you know, he wants to be top of the line type of money at his position. And right now, top of the line type of money at his position is Aaron Donald. And he's definitely not worth that. In fact, I, I don't even think he's worth um top 10 at his position. That's just my opinion. I personally don't think we should pay this guy because our money could go elsewhere. It could be better spent elsewhere. And even with him gone, our defensive line will still be very strong. The best thing to do here would probably be to franchise tag him or if he's a very, you know, negotiable type of guy, go out there and talk to him. Be like, hey, man, can you take like, you know, somewhere in the ballpark of 12 to 15 million a year, you know, come in here, work, try to be something great. But I don't think we should pay him anything more than like 13 million dollars a year. And I could be wrong. Maybe next year we do. You know, maybe we do resign him next year. He comes out and he has a career year. Who knows? But in my opinion. This is his fourth or fifth year in the league. You know what you're going to get from him no matter where you move him across the line. Next up, Rhett Ellison. Rhett Ellison is a player that I think is very underrated on this Giants team. But he was initially brought in here because of his blocking ability. And he's our best blocking tight end um, on the field right now no matter what you say. But he's also extremely underrated in the passing game and that's why I like him. Ellison has shown time and time again when he's given the ball in the passing game that he could make moves with it. He's very underrated with yards after the catch. You could watch highlights from last year when Eli was passing balls to him. Um, you know, uh, in almost every game Eli likes to favor his tight ends. Whenever he got Elson the ball, Elson was like almost all the time getting a first down or he was making catches that for a guy who's known for his blocking ability, you wouldn't think be able to make those catches. I'm not saying he's out here, he's like Rob Gronkowski or something. No, I'm just saying that he's very underrated in the passing game. And in my opinion, that means he's versatile. Now, the coaches might not look at it like that. Maybe the coaches think that he's not that versatile. He's just okay in the passing game and they let him go. Another reason they could let him go is because of the salary. Kind of like Leonard Williams. He is, as much as I love Rhett Ellison, he is overpaid. And I would love to keep him on here because I believe we're going to move on from Ingram. And I believe we should move on from Ingram. And we should do it quickly while he still has, you know, some type of value draft-wise and trade him from like a second or third rounder. That's another video, another topic for another day, but... 
Ellison, I think we should keep on because he's still our best blocking tight end and we still need that. And like I said, man, he's very underrated in yards after cash. Uh, I, I do hope I do hope we keep him, but I think it's very dependent on what we do with Evan Ingram. The reason he would be cut, salary, and maybe the coaches just don't think he's versatile. Next up is Corey Coleman, the forgotten soul. He's unfortunately been that this year. Corey Coleman coming into the 2019 season was supposed to be our number three wide receiver, possibly even our number two, depending how he performed. Because he came off a great uh, comeback-esque year with the Giants in 2018, showed nothing but progression and nothing but good signs going in to the offseason into 2019 where he was unfortunately injured along with damn near 90% of our wide receiver group right before the season began. Coleman is the speedy wide receiver with safe hands. What does that sound like? Darius Slayton. Darius Slayton for this team this year is what I believe Coleman could have been. And because of that, I don't know if we're going to keep him. I think he's still a great talent and he wanted to be on the Giants. He wanted to stay with us because he, he clicked with the team. He clicked with the scheme and everything, but even that is gone. Shermer's not here anymore, man. It's a it's a completely new offense, and we don't know how he's going to fit in here. I believe he can fit here. I believe we should keep him, but similar to how we let go of guys like um, Tavares King and Roger Lewis Jr. in the 2017 offseason, or that offseason right when Shermer was hired, those guys were good wide receivers too. You know, they were good backup wide receivers, much like Coleman is. And Roger Lewis specifically could have developed into something, in my opinion, of a good number three, much like Coleman can. But they were let go nonetheless because of a new coaching staff. And I really would be sad to see him go. But there's a very, very huge probability that this guy is going to be gone as much as I don't want him to be. Next up on the list is two people, actually. I grouped them together because not only are their positions the same, but their situations, in my opinion, are very much the same. In Spencer Pulley and John Jalapio, or John Jalapio. This guy's been on the team for damn near three years, and I still can't pronounce his name. Listen, they're both okay centers. And that's being generous, especially with Jalapio. Spencer Pulley, in my opinion, I personally think he's the better center, and... When Jalapio was named the starter, I even said I, I think Pulley should have been the guy to be in the starter because I, I, Pulley has more experience and he's shown on the field, in my opinion, to be better in the run blocking game. You know, part of that, uh, pat, you know, that those offensive linemen that were signed in the second half of the 2018 offseason, Jamal Brown and Spencer Pulley, these guys were the reasons the offensive line trended upwards toward the end of that season. And I believe we should have given him another shot at the starter position because it's not like he did anything. It's not like he was bad or anything like that. He was good. He was okay. And I believe he's better than Jalapio because he's had better games and, you know, just production on the field, but also because Pulley has been healthier than Jalapio. You know, I'm not going to put injuries as a fault to anybody, but availability, you know, that's the best ability in football. But both of them could be gone in this offseason. I definitely believe one of them is going to be gone because we need a new center. Right now on the offensive line, we only have two good players, and that is Kevin Zeitler and Will Hernandez. And even Will Hernandez, to an extent, looked a little bad this year. So who knows? But the positions we need to look at, center and the two tackles. And I believe we're either going to sign somebody, you know, on like a nice uh, cheap deal or a prove-it deal, or we're going to draft somebody late for that center position. And one of these guys is going to be gone. Maybe we do both. And, you know, both of them are gone. Who knows? But... Uh, these guys are definitely up there for people that can be cut. Like I said, I personally prefer Pulley, but uh, Jalapio has been the starter, and he's been less than stellar, to be kind with it. Next up, Wayne Gallman. This was actually kind of like, as I was going through the list, I finalized it, and these last three people I just sort of put in there because I was like, it's a, it's a valid concern. Wayne Gallman, there's a good chance he's going to be gone after this offseason because... As a backup running back for Saquon Bartley, um, listen, he's been forgettable at most. He's been inconsistent at all times. And I know you're a backup running back. I know you're a backup position, but you're still out there with the starting players. You know what I'm saying? You're still being involved in the game uh, a good amount. And, you know, you're still out there to make plays. The only good game this guy has had. Think about this. Think about this, my guys. The only good game... And I know the only good game you can recall Wayne Gallman having was against the team that currently has the number two overall pick in the Washington Redskins. That's it. 
That's it. I ain't see or I can't recall any other good game that Wayne has ever had as the backup running back. And, and even then, he's not the type of backup running back that we need right now. Or at least the one that I believe we need. And the one I want is a bruiser back. And Saquon is a do-it-all back. Don't get it twisted or any way, shape, or form. I still believe he's the best running back in the league. And I believe that he's the a do-it-all back. He could run through the middle. He could run through the side. He could receive. He's agile, powerful. You name it, he is it. But he does do most of his damage on, you know, outside zone type of runs. You know what I'm saying? He does, He's not... While he can run up the middle, he's not very successful while doing so. Or I guess I should say his success there isn't consistent as it is with when he goes outside. And that's why we need, in addition to resting him a bit, and I want him to be preserved, that's why we need a bruiser type back to back up um, Saquon Barkley. And Wayne Gallman is not that bruiser type back, in addition to being inconsistent at, you know, most times. So I believe he's going to be cut, along with, of course, hiring a new running back coach and whatnot. Next up, BJ Hill, and I probably should have said this when I said when I said Dalvin Tomlinson and uh, um, Leonard Williams. Well, BJ Hill, it's really, I only got one thing to say here. I don't think he should be cut because there is such a thing known as the sophomore slump. And I want to see him for at least one more year, especially after that great rookie year that he had. People forget that BJ Hill currently holds the Giants rookie sack record. And that's not an easy thing to do. He had, he had like five to six sacks in his rookie year. He did regress a lot this year, but I believe those were factors of the, the defense in general being worse, uh, less playing time, uh, you know, to some degree, especially when Williams came in. And, you know, in general, the sophomore slump being a thing. This is a thing in the NFL. It's not just saying a lot of players in their second year regress a little. It just happens because, you know, teams got more film on you. They know how to stop you better. And it's your job to adjust in the offseason and come back in the third year and we see what we got. That's why I want to keep him on for a third year. But if we keep Leonard Williams, there's a good chance Hill might be the collateral to go. Maybe we keep Leonard Williams and we keep the defensive line as is. Because personally, I think it's it's good as is. I think it's perfect as is. Just fix the linebacking core, which includes the pass rushers on the outside linebacking core. But uh, Hill, if Leonard Williams stays, there's a chance he might be gone. I want him to stay though, man. He is he And he is the definition of versatile. He can't stop the run and he also has a good pass rushing ability. Let me know what you guys think on this one, because this is probably the most interesting one I have on the list. And last but not least, or I should say last but least, Kareem Martin. Do I even need to say anything, guys? Like, honestly, I thought he was, like, off the team already, and um, that that's about it. That's all the time I'm giving Kareem Martin, man. He should have been off the team since last season. That's it for y'all. Let me know what you all think. I'm not going to extend this video anymore. Like, share, subscribe, put your comments down below. I'm out. You're... Alright guys, thanks for watching. Put your comments down below. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Until next time, I'm out. You're...